section 6.2 the binomial distribution and these are the objectives determine whether a random variable is binomial uh, next uh, determine the probability distribution of a binomial random variable next uh, compute binomial probabilities and the last one uh, compute the mean and the variance of the binomial distribution. <clears throat> so this is just like uh, what we did uh, last time from uh, for 6.1 uh, probability distribution. So this time uh, it's a binomial distribution. <clears throat> so determine whether a random variable is binomial Excuse me. So suppose that your favorite fast food chain is giving away uh, a coupon uh, with every purchase of a meal. 20% uh, of that, uh, those uh, entitle you to a free hamburger and the rest of them say better luck next time. So 10 of, your order lunch, 10 of you order lunch at this restaurant. Suppose we want to know the probability that three of you win a free hamburger. In general, if we let X be the number of people out of 10. So let X be the number of people out of 10 uh, that win a free hamburger. What is the probability distribution of X? And in this section, you will learn that X has a distribution called the binomial distribution, which is one of the most useful probability distributions. Uh, probability distribution, this is what we did uh, last time from 6.1, whereas uh, you have x and p of x. Remember this uh, the other night? x, you should have all the numbers here. And two properties for uh, the probabilities should be between 0 and 1. And the sum should equal to 1.0. <clears throat> for binomial distribution, we also have uh, conditions just like the probability distribution are those two conditions, but this time for bi uh, binomial, we should have all this. So if you need to copy this, uh, copy. A fixed number of trials are conducted. There are two possible outcomes, success and failure. The probability uh, of success is the same on each trial. All the trials are independent. And the random variable X represents the number of successes that occur. So take note of those notations. N is the number of trials and P is the probability of a success. <clears throat> P and let me know when you're done. So Anissa, Rebecca, and Chelsea are done.
So we have five here. Uh, <clears throat> we added Mayan and Amanda. All right, so, so take note of all these uh, conditions uh, and we're gonna try the next examples here if it is a binomial experiment based on these conditions. So example number one, a fair coin is tossed 10 times. Let X be the number of times uh, the coin lands heads. Now, is this a binomial experiment? So you're tossing a coin uh, and you toss it 10 times. So that is a trial, right? Every toss, that is a trial. And there are two possible outcomes, heads or tails. <clears throat> And let X be the number of uh, times that coin lands heads. So that is your success. And the number of trials, uh, N and P, N is equal to 10. And the probability of uh, getting ahead uh, heads is equal to uh, one half. So that's why this is a binomial experiment. So the trials are independent. When you, when you toss the coin uh, 10 times, uh, all the trials are independent because the outcome uh, does not affect the other uh, tosses. Okay, how about this one? Five basketball players each attempt a free throw. Let X be the number of free throws made is this a binomial experiment? What do you think? Why not? Michael, why not? say no because wouldn't it depend on each one making one like if... say that again sorry uh, I I was thinking of it like a competition so no it, it... You're, you're talking about the five uh, players basketball uh, players well would the trials be independent since since they're well, no, because they're, they're, I'm thinking it's a competition. So, no, they, it, it would be a binomial experiment. Because it doesn't matter if one makes it or not. It's not even saying that they're attempting this on the same day or the same time or any of that. So, no, it would be, yes, it is. Is it? Uh, what do you think, Amanda? You said no also. I, I think because each player is going to have a different number of um, – of actually making a free throw. So it, it um, I mean, based on what they're capable of, I'm assuming. No, just just one free throw. So let's say just, just one free throw. <clears throat> I was wondering the same thing. Would the probability of success be the same if each of them have a different skill level? So, yeah, that's the big question. Because, uh, uh, you know, the conditions should be, uh, they should have the same uh, probability of success, right? So yeah. would those five basketball players uh, would have the same uh, probability of success? Wouldn't it depend on their level of talent? Right. Yes, yeah, so the answer is, it is not a binomial experiment. Okay, because not all basketball players are the same when it comes to uh, free throws. So they will not all be equally skilled at making free throws. Okay. How about the next one? 
there are 10 cards in a box, five are red and five are green. Three of the cards are drawn at random. Let X be the number of red cards drawn. Now, is this a binomial experiment? What do you think? There are 10 cards, five red, five green. And you need to uh, pick uh, three cards. Let X be the number of red cards drawn. Mary Kyla said uh, yes, uh, because there are two possible outcomes. <clears throat> what do you mean? Amanda said no. Why not? Well, because we don't know which colors were drawn. And so like with the head, with the toss of the coins, there's a chance of it being half heads and half tails. So it makes it independent. Here there's three cars, car, cards. And mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's not independent. Y is not independent. That's correct. It's not independent, so it's not a binomial experiment. But why it is not independent? Is it because you're only drawing three out of ten cards? Uh, no. Five. Five, three, ten. Carlos, that is correct. So because every time you pull a card, the total amount goes Oh, off. okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so this is like an example of without replacement. So uh, like I, I remember uh, I showed you an example uh, with a, uh, 10 marbles. So when you pick uh, one without replacement, then the total marbles, like this one, the total cards after you pick one is going to be nine, right? So that depends on the first uh, uh, pick. Then the third one, that depends on the first and the second, right? So these are not uh, independent. <clears throat> so by the way, uh, in probability, if you don't see uh, with or without replacement, if you don't see that uh, uh, statement, it should be understood that it is without replacement. Okay, so don't forget that. So the trials are not independent. Very good. Next one, uh, determine the probability distribution of a binomial random variable. <clears throat> so consider the binomial experiment of tossing three times a bias coin that has probability of 0.6 of coming up heads. That takes with the number of heads that's, uh, that come up. If you want to compute P of two, the probability that exactly two of the tosses are heads. There are three arrangements of two heads in three tosses. <clears throat> All right, so to make it uh, easier to understand this type of problem, so you're talking about, uh, let me uh, explain this uh, first. So tossing three times tossing a coin three times, what are the possible outcomes? And how many?
So if I if I toss uh, a coin three times, uh, possibilities. Let's say the first one is gonna be uh, let's say heads. It's also possible that the second toss is a head, and another is a head. Right? Do you agree? So that's one possibility. Tossing it three times. Another possibility is heads, uh, heads and tails, or heads, tails, and heads, or they agree. Also possible, let's say, all T, tails, and a head. So these are the possible outcomes when you toss a coin three times. Okay, so or how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or uh, total possible outcomes is when you toss a coin that is at either heads or tails, then that's two. And if you do it three times, two cubed, two times two times two is equal to eight. So that you know that it's gonna be equal to eight. Okay, mm -hmm. so take note of that. <clears throat> so here, uh, if we want to compute a P of two, uh, the probability that exactly uh, uh, two of the tosses are heads. So there are three arrangements of the two heads in three tosses. So look at uh, the possibilities here. Test, test, can you hear me? Test? Yes. Exactly two of the tosses are heads, and those are HHT, HTH, and THH. That's how you get the three out of the total eight. Okay? So the probability of HHT is uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, and 0 0.4 because it, it says here given let's say the probability coming up heads, let's say for example is 0.6. So if it's heads, heads, tails, so 0 0.6, 0 0.6, tails is the complement of this. If you subtract it from uh, one, it's gonna be 0.4. Since the first one, this one is uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, this one, H T H H is 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and the other one is also 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and 0 0.6. Or simply, they're all 2.6 and a 0.4. Do you agree? So this is the same thing as 0 0.6 squared times 0 0.4. So this one also and this one also. So that's how you, uh, you cut those. <clears throat> so now you have all those three. So that's why you write this three times 0 0.6 squared times 0 0.4. Is that a lot? Any questions? And we actually have a formula for that. If you want to get the probability of, uh, you want the two, exactly two of the tosses are heads. These are, this is the formula and don't worry, I'm not gonna ask you to uh, use this formula because there's a combinations with the, with the permutation, uh, combinations and the probabilities, and we don't need to do that. <clears throat> so 
like what I mentioned earlier, we're going to use uh, uh, a graphing calculator to solve this. So objective three is computing the binomial probabilities. There are three uh, ways to compute this. The first one is hand computation. That is by using the formula. Uh, the one that I showed you, this is uh, by hand comp computation. Uh, we're not going to use that. So we can skip this, uh, but we are going to solve this uh, problem A, B, C, and D. Okay, so we're going to skip uh, using uh, the formula. You can see here this is by uh, using the formula, <clears throat> solving A, B, C, and D. The second way is this, uh, the second method, same objective. This time, computing probabilities by tables. So again, we're not going to use this. Uh, because uh, I won't be able to provide you uh, tables. Same problem uh, to answer A, B, C, and D. And this is by using a table. And the third method uh, with the same objective, uh, computing the binomial probabilities is by using the TI-84. And this is a lot easier. Okay, you ready? So there are two things uh, that uh, you need to use for this uh, type of problems. So when you use your calculator second bars, so that's the first thing you're going to uh, uh, press second bars, and then you're gonna choose either binomial PDF or binomial PDF. Since this section is all about binomial distribution, so that's why we're using binomial PDF and binomial CDF. So what is the difference between these two? When, when do you use binom PDF and when do you use binom CDF? So take note of this. <clears throat> binom PDF when it is exactly equal to that number. It's equal to a specific value of X. Like probability of two, probability of three, exactly uh, to that specific uh, value probability of five. So you use binomial PDF. You use a uh, next is when do you use a binomial CDF? That is when it is X less than or equal to that number. Like probability of uh, X is less than or equal to uh, three. What do you mean by less than or equal to again? Less than or equal to, what do you mean by that? Three or less. Three or less, just like this one, meaning from zero, one, two, and three. You want to get the probability of zero plus the probability of one plus the probability of two plus the probability of three, okay? Or also if you use, uh, if you see at most, Let's say at most three is the same thing as X or less than or equal to three. At most three meaning from zero to three. Okay, let's try solving these uh, problems. <clears throat> if uh, you use uh, other type of uh, a TI calculator, uh, when you use a binom, uh, second bars, so it's the same uh, for, uh, you have to press second bars, bars, and then choose, let's say if you, you choose a binomial PDF, uh, sometimes uh, I think TI-83, if you have TI-83, uh, you're gonna see uh, open parenthesis, and all you have to do is just enter in order your N, your P, and your X. So let's say if you want to solve the probability of two, so you want binom uh, PDF. Let's say if you have a total uh, N of 10, you want a probability of 0.6 and your X is two. And then uh, close parenthesis, enter. Okay, so for those uh, other type of a TI calculator, same thing with a binom 
CDF. All right, so let's try this. <clears throat> Who wants to read the problem? Do you mind going back to the last slide just for half a second? I was almost done copying. Yeah, no problem. Awesome, thank you so much. Would you like to read the problem? Sure. The Pew Re PDW Research Center recently reported that approximately 30% of internet users in the United States use the image sharing website Pinterest. Suppose a simple random sample of 15 internet users is taken. Use the binomial probability distribution to find the following probabilities. Do you need me to read A through D? All right, that's fine. Okay. All right, so uh, every time you solve this type of problem, first you need to identify your probability and your n. That's why I asked you to copy the notations about n and p, right? So n is the sample, sample of 15, so your n is equal to 15. Probability, based on this uh, problem, uh, it is supported that approximately 30% of internet users, so that's why p is 0.3. Okay, so take note of that. So n is equal to 15 and p is equal to 0.3 or 0.3. And we need to solve for letter A, find the, uh, the probability that exactly four of the sampled people use Pinterest. So we want here probability of four. So that's exactly four. So I need to show you using a TI cup. So please also get your TI. All right, so it's always second verse, and then exactly. So scroll down and look for binom PDF. It's letter A. Okay, so second verse binom PDF. So trials, your that is your N. And what was the number of trials again? Was it fifteen? And then the probability given 0.3. And, and letter A, you want to get a P of 0.3. exactly 4. So meaning your X is 4. Mine comes up a little different. After second bars, I just get the bino MPDF with the beginning of a parenthesis, not the trials P and X value. Am I supposed to? put something in there to get to your screen? Yes, that's what I just uh, uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, when you, uh, the, like the last uh, slide. So when you try the second bars, you will uh, bind on PDF. You will see open parentheses, right? Yes. Yes. So all you have to do is in order N, P, X. Got it. Sorry, I totally N. did not get that. Your N is, you have to type uh, 15, comma. Don't forget comma is uh, next above seven. So 15, comma, and then uh, probability is 0.3, comma. Your X probability of four, so this is four then close parenthesis, enter, you will get the answer. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah, no problem.
So here, let's uh, get the answer. Enter. Point two one eight six. Okay. Any questions? This is probability exactly four. So that's how you answer. Uh, if you want an ex uh, exact probability using binomial distribution, so you have to use binomial PDF and you should have this as your answer for letter A. All right, letter B. And the probability that fewer than three of the people use Pinterest. So now, what do you mean by fewer than three? So now we would use a. Uh binomial CDF, right? Uh, we'll see. First, what do you mean by fewer than three? Less than three digits. Less than three, and what are those numbers? What are the numbers less than three? Zero, one, two. So you know that uh, fewer than three, that's like probability of one, uh, zero, one, and two, right? So also meaning, uh, take note of this, uh, prob uh, fewer than three is the same thing as less than or equal to two. Do you agree? Yes. Less than or equal to two is also from zero, one, and two. So now uh, from zero, one, and two, the reason why uh, I showed you that fewer than three is less than or equal to, uh, to two, because you can only use binom CDF if it's less than or equal. Uh, fewer than three, meaning is this is less than three, right? So uh, you cannot use binom CDF and then use the number three. So here you're gonna use binom CDF and here uh, NPX, N is uh, 15, probability is point, uh, what's it, three? Yeah, point three, and now your X is two. So be careful with your X value. So it says fewer than three, do not do not use a three because if you use binom CDF it should be less than or equal. And fewer than three meaning less than or equal to two. So that's why your last number here, your X number here is two. So try that. Second vars, scroll down, look for binom CDF. Haley, what's the problem? You can't hear anything? So use your calculator second, uh, uh, VARS binom CDF, then number of trials 15, 
uh, probability P is 0.3, X is 2. What is the answer? So may 0.1268. Did you get the same thing? Did you get the same thing? Yes, yes. <clears throat> All right. All right, very good. Okay, next one. Ah, uh, wait. All right. Hey, what's the problem? All right, uh, next one. So we have a 0.1268 here. Let us see, uh, find uh, the probability that more than one person. So this is very important that you understand the conditions. More than one person, probability of more than one. So what do we know about more than one? Anything higher than one? Very good. Anything higher than one. So that is like two, three, four, five, six, right? Do you agree? So yeah. this is the probability of two, probability of three, probability of four, but we don't know when to stop. So how are we going to solve this? <clears throat> We cannot use a binomial PDF because uh, you have uh, probability of two, three, four, and we don't know uh, the end here. So how about more than one, uh, the opposite of this? What's the opposite of all this? Meaning the complement, what's the complement of this? Less than or equal to one. Less than or equal to one. Do you agree? So the complement of this, so let's say if you have the probability of zero and probability of one, if you get this, and if you subtract this from one, you will get this. Do you agree? So when you get the complement of this, that is for you to get all this more than one. So in other words, all you have to do uh, more than one, probability of X greater than one, to answer this is, should be one minus probability of less than or equal to one. Do you agree? And less than or equal, so meaning this is binom CDF. So binom CDF, the number of trials 15, uh, probability is 0.3 and your X is one. So try that. So it's just simply one minus binom CDF of less than or equal to one.
So you can type uh, 0 0.9647. 0 0.9647. All right, thank you. Any questions so far? All right, letter D. Let's try letter D, a little challenging. To find the probability that the number of people who use Pinterest is between one and four inclusive inclusive meaning you have to include uh, one and four so meaning this is probability of one plus two plus a three, plus four. So all the four probabilities. So now, how do we use our shortcut here? Any idea? How are we going to answer this uh, this problem? What are we? Same thing we were doing on the other problems, but for X we. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is a little challenging, so that's why I'm, I'm asking you first. So how are you going to solve this problem between one and four? How, how are we going to get a probability from one up to four? Can we find the probability for each one and then just add them up? Um, that's also correct, but uh, that's a lot, right? What if it's like uh, between one and eight? That's correct, though. Uh, 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 well, I know we're, we're looking for the opposite, but which we'd minus from one, I think, but I'm just trying to figure out what all we'd include that in that, like just what's below one, or is there a certain amount of numbers above four we'd include? Okay, good thinking. What else? About calculating uh, P of uh, one to four minus p of zero, and that gives us the middle between one and four. All right, almost. All right, so uh, meaning. Remember. P, p of four minus p of zero. P of four, P of four minus P of zero. Will that give us the interval, the range of uh, probability? All right, so almost. So this should be the probability since uh, uh, up to four, it should be less than or equal to four. What do you mean by less than or equal to four again? P can be zero, P can be one, P can be two, P can be three. All right. Four, four. Yeah, that's correct. So this is from zero to four, right? Do you agree? But we want from one to four. So if you get this, you just have to subtract zero. 
again. Less than or equal to four, this is from zero to four. Zero, one, two, three, and four, right? This is zero, one, two, three, and four. But we only want to get the probabilities from one up to four. So you only want this from one to four. So meaning we need to remove this. So that's why we are subtracting probability of zero. Okay? And to do that, so we know that less than or equal is binom CDF. So you'll be able to use binom CDF here with the 15 trials and the probability of 0.3 and your X is four. Minus probability of zero, this is an exact. So you'll be able to use binom PDF so again, this is 15.3 and zero. So try that and you will be able to get the answer. Answer, uh, all right, so that is correct. 0 0.5107, very good. Any questions? All right, very good. <clears throat> so make sure to copy you might see something like this. <clears throat> All right, the last objective is compute the mean and the variance of a binomial random variable. So remember last time, uh, we also, uh, for probability distribution, we computed for the mean and uh, the standard deviation. So we're gonna compute also here and there is no shortcut. You need to memorize these formulas. So mean is n times p. You know how to identify your, your p and n, just like what we did from uh, the previous problems, right? So you just have to multiply those two and that is already your mean. Okay, variance, this is the symbol for variance, is all only n times p times the complement of P. Just like uh, earlier, if you have 15 trials, the probability of 0.3, one minus 0.3 is 0 0.7, right? So when you multiply this, that is your variance. Standard deviation is just the square root of this, 15 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.7. Easy, right? It's actually the easiest part, the mean and the variance. So all you have to do is just identify your N and P. So let's try that here. <clears throat> so the probability that a new car of a certain model will require repairs during the warranty period is 0.15. A particular dealership sells 80 such cars let X be the number that will require repairs during the warranty period. Find the mean and the standard deviation. So mean is so 
So we know that is n p. First, what is n and what is p here? N is. And the probability is? 0 0.15. Yes, these two. So all you have to do is multiply those two and you will get the answer. What is the answer? So, all right. And the last one, uh, it says uh, standard deviation. So this is the symbol, uh, standard deviation. And don't forget that it is the square root of NP times one minus P. So square root of 80 times 0.15 Complement of 0.15, or if you subtract it from one, is 0 0.85. So multiply that and get the square root. Three point one nine three is seven. Thank you. Very good. Questions. So you will definitely see something like this on the test. Any questions? Michael said no. How about the rest? Are we good? Wait, where did we get the 0.85 from? It's one, the formula is one minus P. So one minus 0.15 is 0.85. Okay, got it, thank you. Yeah. So it's the complement of your P. You just always subtract it from one. <clears throat> All right, so that's the end of 6.2 and of course, I'd like to uh, show you a, a problem from the book before our uh, uh, our activity. It's going to be real quick. <clears throat> so you should be able to uh, finish uh, the homework. Uh, if I were you, don't wait. Uh, don't wait uh, Sunday and uh, to finish all this because you're going to need to uh, remember to. Uh, review and prepare for your long test on Monday. So it's from, uh, it's all the four chapters, four, five, and six. So here's the ebook and I wanna show Okay, college bond, 37. Oops. All right, the statistical abstract of the United States reported that 66% of the, of the students who graduated from high school in 2012 enrolled in college. So 30 high school graduates are sampled. So based on that, uh, your N is equal to what is N and P? Is it 0.66 and 30? Yeah, so N is a 30 and P is 0.66. Okay, you, uh, make sure that you know how to identify your N and P because 
you're going to need that a lot for all the problems. Letter A, exactly 18. So meaning P of 18. So exactly meaning, uh, what's the shortcut for exactly? The question is always like, is it binom PDF or binom CDF? So letter A, exactly 18, what do we need to use here? Yes, binom PDF. Binom PDF, second bar is the binom PDF. Uh, N, so that is 30, P, 0.66, and your X, 18. Oh, you already have the answer, thank you. 0.11. Six, five. Okay, letter B, more than 15. That, that means a greater than 15. Now, how do we solve this? More than 15. Would it be binom CDF? Uh, yes. Uh, Do we first uh, subtract 15 and less? So remember, greater than 15. So yeah, uh, uh, that is 16, 17, 18, 19, right? We don't know when to stop, right? Yeah. So yes, uh, you're going to subtract 15 and less. You're going to subtract it from... one do you agree yes so this is binom cdf cdf of uh, 30 point 66 what is your x here um, Fourteen. Would it be negative fourteen if it's one minus fifteen? Mm -hmm. If it's one minus fifteen, oh, because fourteen encapsulates everything under. Never mind, that makes sense. So again, uh, binom CDF of fourteen is from zero to fourteen. The probability is from 0 to 14. If you subtract it from 1, then uh, you're going to get a, a, oh wait, sorry, greater than 15. So, uh, my mistake. That's greater than 15, that is 15, uh, 16, 17, 18, right? So this should be, uh, where's my marker? Sorry, sorry. This should, marker. That should be 15, sorry. Okay. So answer. Thank you, 0 0.9486. So take note of this uh, on the test. When you see more than, all you have to do is to one minus binom CDF of that number, always. Okay, next, fewer than 12. Fewer, meaning less than 12. We did this earlier. What do you mean by less than 12? What are the numbers less than 12? Zero through 11. Very good, zero through 11. So meaning we're gonna use a binom CDF from zero to 11, right? So 30.66, and this is gonna be 11. 
Very good. So answer. Answer. Minus CDF three point six six. And 11, what is the answer? I got a long answer, uh, 9.7138. Is it? I got the same thing. Me too. What is... Hey, Professor, what does it mean when we have the E with the negative four after all these? Oh, <clears throat> you, you have uh, E to the negative four? Yes. Yes. Uh, all right. So if you see this, good question. If you see 9.7138 and then you see E uh, negative four, right? It's, it's actually mm -hmm. 9.7138195 yeah. e yeah. to the negative four. Yeah, I just, I didn't write the, uh, the I mean, e to the negative four, pay attention to this, meaning this is exponent uh, raised to negative four, meaning from this decimal here, you move this to the left four times. One, two, three, four. So this can be zero, zero, zero of that. So that's why it's going to be 0 0.0010. Is the answer. So if we don't answer it with the with the point zero zero zero, we get it wrong. Uh, if if your answer is nine point seven one three eight, it's wrong. It's not the same as this, right? Okay. But uh, if you answer, I will accept this. Uh, if you answer 9.7138 with E negative 4, that is correct. I have a question. Yes. What if, in, for example, it was 9.2138, then would it have been 0 0.0091 or? 0 0.0009. Oh, okay. So then we would just leave it off with the 9. Yes, because uh, next number to nine is two. So okay. that's, that's why we increase this because next number to nine is seven. So if you increase by one, so that's why it's one zero. Okay. Any other questions? All right, letter D, more than, it's the same thing as letter B, more than 25. So one minus binom P C D F thirty point sixty six N twenty five. So get that, and then the, the answer the question is would it be unusual? Unusual meaning when do we know if it's unusual? If it's point zero five or less. If less than point zero five, yeah. Is it less than 0 0.05? So more than, it's one minus binom CDF 30.66 and 25. Anissa said yes. Is that correct?
Michael, more than, whenever you see more than, it should be one minus. One minus binom CDF, okay? So don't forget that. So that's the hint. Every time you see uh, more than 25, more than of a number, you always use one minus binom CDF. If you see fewer than, you have to use a binom CDF, uh, N, P, and this is, you subtract one, X minus one. All right, so it's a no. How about letter E and F, mean and standard deviation? What is the mean? What do we do here again? Oops, sorry. Mean is? N times P. N times P. So you just have to multiply this 30 times 0.66. And the answer? Nineteen point eight. All right, very good. And the last one, standard deviation. Yes, the square root of n times p times the complement of this one minus p is point thirty four. Answer? Don't forget this is a square root, square root of 30 times 0 0.66 times 0 0.34, 2.5946. Okay, be careful. Any questions? Chapter six. 6.1 probability distribution, 6.2 binomial distribution. All right, so why it's not unusual? Again, it's more than, did you solve this? Uh, it's like letter B. B is more than 15, so 1 minus binom CDF 30.66, 25. So you just have to change this to 25. For letter F, how do I do that in the calculator again? Uh, second X squared. You see this? Yeah. And you will see now the square root. Okay. And then those numbers 30 times 0.66 times 0.34. Wait, uh, Mary, letter E, it's about the mean, not unusual. Are you talking about letter D? It, it is unusual, unusual. it says, uh, the answer here said yes. It is unusual. Any other questions? I know that you mentioned more than is the keywords of one minus bio 
genome uh, CDF. But what did you say less than was the Q for something? Less than is fewer than, so that is letter C. Okay, but uh, so in our little letter C, we didn't minus a one anywhere, right? Yes. Uh, uh, all right, so good question though. Okay, so uh, the more done, uh, that is like letter B and letter D, right? Yes. So all you have to do here is one minus binom PTF. Uh, I don't have space. Sorry. Is it PDF? Oh. I thought it was minus CDF. CDF, sorry. <laughs> uh. Off should be N P and your X, whatever, more than five, so you have to use that X is five. If it's less than, it's gonna be binom CDF. So take note of this, this time is N, P, N is X minus one. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so take note of that. So if you see more than NPX, if it's less one minus binom CDF NPX, if it's less than binom CDF, but your X is X minus one. Thank you. Also, how you used um, CDM. Sorry, CDF and then CF. How do we tell when is the right time to use it? Say, what, what is it again? Sorry. Like there's an option. So it's a binom CDF and binom PDF. Yes, binom PDF, that's letter A, exact, exact number. Oh, okay. So if it's exactly the number, it's not like yeah. greater than it's, or less. Like yes, yes. Yeah. So just like letter A, when we solve this, we solve P of 18, an exact number. So this is binom PDF. Okay. I have a question um, on on F. Where did you get point 0.34? I, for, I missed that step. All right. So the formula is uh, uh, N... P and one minus P. One minus P. One minus point uh, 66. That's why it is point oh, three. Okay. okay, so it's like whatever your P is, subtract it from one. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? All right, no other questions. And I'm going to stop this.